I believe that every movie adheres to the 29 point story structure. No matter if the writer outlines first or dives in blind, the end product follows the same 29 beats. Space Sweepers is my exhibit S. A Twitter poll saves the day again and delivers a space opera of almost Shakespearean breath. The scale and beauty of this interplanetary dystopia rivals franchise offerings like Star Wars and Star Trek. I could not look away, hypnotized by the characters, and I had to backtrack too many times because I forgot I was taking notes for this channel. Jo Sung Hee gave us what is touted as South Korea's first sci-fi blockbuster. Its global appeal is rooted in its embrace of universal storytelling. And that's only made possible by holding to the 29 point story structure from start to end. Let's begin. A tight focus on the core elements of the protagonist's personality, inner conflict, and situation. The corporate sponsored dystopian future, complete with a dying earth and technologically profitable solutions. Sullivan, the seemingly ageless architect of this dystopia and the Victory's crew as they navigate the competitive nature of space sweeping. Where, why, and how the protagonists exist in their world, with a focus on why they don't quite fit in. The crew navigates the crushing moors of UTS bureaucracy and debt, which leads to the Amber Alert for a missing, exploding android, and Victory's crew showcases their disharmony. A singular event that's never happened before, and is destined to lead the protagonist away from their status quo. A derelict ship powers up, prompting a search for survivors. An examination of what's different in light of the something new, what's the same in spite of it in relation to the status quo. Teho finds Cotton M, the missing Dorothy bomb, and the crew wastes no time in figuring out who and what she is. The discovery that things are less than ideal, or an exploration of how badly things are. Cotton M reveals her connection to the nanobots while the crew debates selling her to Black Fox to avoid official money. The crew negotiates the exchange. Characters dedicate their effort to a specified goal, which is smaller in scope than the primary objective of the third act. Victory's crew prepare to deliver Cotton M, but they're stopped by the authorities. They scramble to keep her hidden. A brief checklist of the story elements needed for the second act. Victory's crew improvises, Affection for Dorothy grows, nothing is as it seems, the wider conspiracy, and Cotton M's childlike unpredictability. The singular event that launches the protagonist into the wild jungle of the second act, also called an oh shit moment. Cotton M saves the crew with powers much more effective than just an explosion. Oh shit. Characters must learn all new rules and expectations distinct to this adventure. Victory's crew is trapped at the maintenance hangar, with a busted engine and no money. Captain Zhang catches affections. Sullivan, dismayed by the loss of the Dorothy bomb, ramps up pressure on his board of directors. Characters showcase their ability to grow in the areas this adventure requires, typically through external means. Cottenham reaches out to Tae Ho, and they work together and make quick cash. Then Bubs and Cottenham connect over their grasp of humanity. Characters face legitimate and understandable reasons to deviate from their stated convictions, agendas, or desires. Teho's backstory with Suni, what made him unable to kill non-citizens, and how he lost her. An escalation of problems that vex the characters. Teho sets up another exchange just as the bank repossessions start. Tiger voices the desire to keep Cottenham. Captain Zhang pieces together the nanobots report file then someone tries to kidnap Cotton M. Characters evolve internally by utilizing everything they've gathered and learned. Tiger pieces together the last couple hours, then leads the crew to Cotton M and keeps them all safe. Sullivan's backstory is expounded. Journey-weary characters reconcile the reality of their ongoing situation with who they were in the first act. Black Fox members make themselves known and explain their true mission. Sullivan proves himself the monster. A singular event that strikes at the protagonist's core conflict. Cottenham's nanobot abilities, the centerpiece to this entire conspiracy. Characters find a safe harbor that also provides needed answers for both external and internal conflicts. Sullivan's true plans are laid out for Victor's crew. 
the UTS security locks down the hangar to keep them all in place. The clarified objective is realized in part or in whole, though it's meaningless without the completion of the primary objective. The crew reassembles on the ship, but they're still being hunted. They escape the hangar, but they can't shake the torpedoes. An existential conflict that wounds the character's sense of self, worldly identity, or their journey. The crew races to fix the ship before they're torn apart. The nanobots begin to eat the ship alive, then Cottonum pushes them all back and saves everyone. An undeniable win for the protagonist, typically in direct connection to the rebirth. We are treated to the full poetic irony of this crew being the ones who found Cottonum, and they unite her with her father. A grand loss directly connected to the character's newfound inability to quit the journey. The meeting place is booby trapped. Everyone is executed except Victory's crew, then Sullivan walks aboard. A thematic freefall, tied directly to the heavy price. Sullivan gives his villain monologue, breaking down the scope of his great victory over the Victory's crew. That money is about to be worthless on a dead planet. A singular event that robs the protagonist of seemingly any chance of success. Sullivan puts his scorched earth plan into motion. Characters cannot return to their starting personas and must turn to face the primary objective. Teho accepts Sullivan's victory, ventures off to recover his daughter's body. He confronts his past mistakes and rejoins the crew. High flying, pulse pounding, camera shaking, nausea inducing, space fighting. Hells yeah. Characters move towards the climax while utilizing the major swings and sneaky misdirections of the story. The crew rescues Cottonum, then Tiger retrieves his aforementioned hand. Captain Zhang calls in the cavalry, and the recording gag from earlier exposes Sullivan. The final confrontation between the protagonist and the antagonistic force. The rest of the plan is revealed, the crew's ultimate sacrifice to save Cottonum. The singular event where the protagonist finally confronts their place in the status quo. Sullivan is outmaneuvered and defeated. The direct aftermath of the climax. The crew saves Earth, and Cottonum saves her family. The consequences of the climax in relation to other characters in the status quo. Bubs gets the full system upgrade, the crew settles earlier disputes, and Teho gets his closure. The tight focus on the protagonist contrasted from the opening. A snapshot of the family complete. And they're back at it. And there you have it. My 19th example to support my argument that all movies follow the exact same story structure, regardless of how the writer approaches their craft. Space Sweepers is a genre movie that relies on sci-fi norms and tropes, yet not once does it deviate from the 29 point story structure. But does this Korean space opera follow the same plot beats as a studio backed fish out of water buddy cop action comedy blockbuster with contractual soundtrack tie-ins? Yes, yes it arguably does. Next on my docket, Men in Black. Please subscribe to stay up to date with this and future videos, and please like and comment with your thoughts and reactions. I'll talk to you next time.